Okay, how to determine the domain and the range given a graph of a piecewise function. So, first of all, on the domain, remember domain is how far your graph goes from the left to the right. It's looking at your x's. So, I can see that there's an arrow here, and it's just going to continue to go over this way, and there's an arrow here and there's no break. Notice this is all solid, 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 and you might think there's a break right here. There is a break vertically, but horizontally there's not because notice this is an open point, but it lines up with this closed point. So there's technically no break horizontally. So my domain is going to be all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity, and I'll show you here just in a minute what that's going to look like. Now, when you're talking about the range, the range is how far does my graph go up and down? It's your y values. And again, it is going down forever to a negative infinity, and it is going up to positive infinity, but we do have this big gap in here. So my, my range is gonna be negative infinity to, what is that value, negative four, and there's a closed point, so that would be a bracket. And then it picks up again at six. Notice this is a six on the Y. And you might think it's gonna be a parenthesis because that's an open point, but notice those are all solid points. So it's also gonna be a bracket from six to infinity. So it's gonna look just like this right here. And that is my messy six. So notice you have brackets wherever you have closed points. You'll always use parentheses on infinity. Um, the only time you're going to use a parenthesis when there's an actual value is if it would be an open point. All right, so it also wants you to graph this. So let's go back over here, and um, here we go is the actual graph part. Notice when you look at this graph, there are three pieces. There's one piece here, there's a horizontal piece, and then it has a positive slope right here. So there's three pieces. So when I'm going down here to multiple choice, it couldn't be C or D. Notice how there's only two parts right here. So it's either going to have to A or B to have the three pieces. So I've already know it's going to be that. Um, right here, there is a solid point when X equals, I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger for my old eyes right here. X equals, let's see, what is that? At negative four, so anytime x is less than or equal to negative 4, we've got this nice function going down right here. So let's go back over here. And that says x is less than or equal to, okay, let's put that in right here. That would be a negative 4 because it's going down at that point. And it's always, their graphs are really nice on here. It's x because notice if you plug in negative 4, out pops negative 4. If you plugged in negative 5, out pop negative 5. Okay, now let's look at my graph again. It is a nice function, a nice solid function at, what is that, six? These values are all six between negative four and I'm gonna have to make that bigger again. Let's make this graph bigger. Make, be really careful, we're looking at our x values. It's a positive six, that's my y value, between negative four and six. So, I'm going to come back over here. My y value is always 6 between negative 4 and 6. Okay, then go back over here. Once you start at 6, I can't find my mouse. Once you start at 6, it's going on to infinity from there on out. So, it's always going to give you the same value, so you get an x back as long as x is greater than or equal to 6. So that should do it. Let's check our answer. And we are awesome.